Hey guys, RCT3 Imagineer here, and welcome back to Lights On, the no thrills, no frills, behind the look scenes at my rides. Today we're going to be taking a studio tour of my latest attraction, Abyssy. Now for those of you who follow the series, don't fret, I will be going back to look at the other rides that I've done in the past. But since this ride was the latest, I figured it would be best to devote an episode to just this ride before going back to the others. Now this ride in particular was a project that I've wanted to do for quite a while, and it does bear a similar resemblance to a previous ride of mine, but the custom scenery at the time was just not available for the goal I had in mind. Abyssy is based heavily on the video game Abzu, and in case you haven't noticed, it features the score from that game as well. If you're not familiar with the game or the score, please go check it out and support that project. It is an amazing experience all the way around and highly worth the time. But back to RCT3, let's begin the tour. Now the station you're seeing here is a mixture of a lot of different elements. The base is two sci-fi sets that unfortunately I do not know who made, but I do know that this features versions 1 and 2. There's also the standard glass walls from the game to create the uh, aquarium look in the back. Um, Wynor's control room set, Desmatsa's industry age, also the instant wood set from that same developer is used heavily throughout the whole ride. And in the beginning you can also see a bit of Hyoto's deep sea life custom scenery with the uh, fish swimming around. Now as you leave the station and begin to exit the submarine into the deep blue, uh, you have this little area where I guess you could say that you suit up before you go out and decompress. This uses scenery that is in-game as well as Old Spice's boxes and the Sci-Fi Volume 2 custom scenery set as well. Now we're heading into the launch room which features the same scenery as well. However, these white tubing that you see on the sides of the ride are from Imagineer John's uh, log flume set to kind of help get that accurate piping look that I was going for that part of the ride. Um, and the particle effects that you see for the bubbles and the water streams are from NF's particle set. And of course we're using Old Spice's black walls, which really help give darkness in this first beginning section. So here we have the case scene with the anglerfish from Kyoto's Deep Sea Life, and we're using the NF particle effect bubbles to help create that underwater effect, and Shy Guy's rock set to help create that cavern look. Okay, so heading out into, I guess what you could say, outside, we have the first scene, which is all jellyfish. The jellyfish are also from Kyoto's Deep Sea Life set, and you can see that this also features the NF particle bubbles, as well as Damatsu's instant wood for the seaweed. Now, for the seaweed, I had to individually place all those pieces to stack upon each other to give it a really authentic look. Now, the flooring is from a grass set. I want to say it's from MPG, but I could be wrong. In fact, I'm anticipating being wrong on that. Okay, so now we're going to take a first-person look at the lights on. 
for these couple scenes. And my apologies for any uh, close encounters with the scenery that you might have. Now you may have noticed there was a little bit of a weird glitch with some of the scenery, and I found that if you use too much coral from Damasa's instant wood set, um, they tend to have many glitches where you get these weird lines instead of like actual scenery. I don't really know how to explain it, but you'll see it throughout this. Um, I have noticed that this is not a problem at nighttime but it only seems to happen during the daytime. Since I would assume most of you would be making a dark ride to use that much coral, I don't think you have to worry about uh, these kind of glitches because like I said, at nighttime, you don't see any of this. Oh, another thing I will say, one thing that you are not seeing in this video is the uh, lasers or fireworks that were in this. I will say that the laser I did use was, I believe, Heth the Heth the Heth, Tongue Twister, uh, his undersea light beam. And what I did is for this ride is I took that and modified the color and the length and the beams uh, for my purposes with this ride. So if you're looking to replicate the undersea look, you really need to have uh, suitable lasers to help produce that look. And also a few of the fireworks that look like swimming fish are actually my own firework creations. So you will not find those anywhere online except for me. Now, if anyone is interested in using those, I'm more than happy to upload them somewhere just so you could have maybe your own fish swimming particle effect. So comment below if you're interested in having that acquired to your own firework collection. I would be happy to upload that somewhere. Okay, so we're heading into the next scene, which is the dolphin scene. Now, I'm sure some people were not exactly sure how I did this. This is not a green screen, but it is actually dolphins from the game, from the dolphin show. Ride, I guess, the dolphin show. Now, I have a mod that allows me to place scenery without conflicting with the rides itself. So what I did is I took the dolphin show and put it in a bunch of water and then covered it up with Shy Guy's rock sets so that it is not able to be seen from the ride. Okay, and next we have the seahorse scene, which is also a feature of Kyoko's Deep Life set and also features everything else that we have talked about. Now the big scene here is the coral reef scene. And as you can see, it features, again, the same scenery. Uh, however, most of the corals and plants that you see are also from Kyoto's Deep Sea Life set. Um, I have to say that is a really fantastic set if you're looking for a good way to build a aquatic themed ride. There really isn't anything better that I could find and it really helped to make this ride perfect. Although the one thing I have to say is if you do use the animations from this set, be careful of how you place it with the ride. This is something I did not test out fully for myself and I found out that I had fish and other sea creatures just swimming into the ride, which was not intended. So just be careful that when you're placing the animated animals, that you really monitor where they're going after you place them. Okay, and this next, I guess you could say kelp forest area, uh, features a lot of the same things. It's very heavily influenced by Dematsa's instant wood set and Kyoto's deep sea life set as well, as you can see the sardines here. And here we have the sea turtles, also part of the same deep sea life set that I have mentioned before. You have two different kinds. You have the static, which just stay in their place, and animated, which move around. And I think that really helped to create a really 
cool environment for many scenes in this ride. Now the next scene is the orca scene. Now unfortunately this was a really short scene in the ride, but I have to say this is my favorite custom scenery element in Kyoto's Deep Sea Life set. Um, it worked out beautifully for the scene, and it does feature an animated version, which is pretty cool. But I just didn't use it for my ride because it didn't fit for the scene I was trying to make. And here we have the manta rays and a big kelp forest. Now I should also say that amongst the lasers, I did use DRP lights to help with the lighting atmosphere. And now we're into the darker portion of the game. And I'll say darker with air quotations because it's just a little bit more suspenseful. And this is because of the sharks, which were from Kyoto's Deep Sea Life also. Now the submarines you're seeing in this part of the ride were from Imagineer John's Finding Nemo set. And it was interesting when I was making this part of the ride because when it came out in the final product, the lasers I used were actually black. So when the ride went through that part of the laser, it made everything darker, which is an interesting experimentation that I found, and I did not know it would have that effect. But when you go through and look at the original POV, it has this really cool effect where everything just suddenly gets darker. That was not something I intended, it just kind of happened that way. And the Great White Shark ride event is from Dematsu's ride events, just so that you know. Now coming up on this final scene, it was my goal to create a really open space to replicate the open ocean since we have two humpback whales featured in this. And so I went for big open spaces and really tall kelp forests. What's not featured here is that I have about seven or eight different lasers going at the same time in a rotation to create that kind of like shimmery water effect that you see in the POV. And using Kyoto's deep sea life set ride events with the humpback whales, I was able to create this really nice finale to the ride. And adding in all the effects really made a huge difference and created something really special at the end. Okay, that's all I have to say about this ride. It's pretty self-explanatory in terms of the concepts, and I hope you got a better idea of how I made this ride. If there is anything in particular you would like to know how to build or how I did specifically, please comment below and I would be more than happy to create a separate video highlighting those details. But for now, that's all. This is RCT3 Imagineer, signing off.